Hello, you're watching this video now. Just to understand how to use Google Meet and open up all of the things you need for an assessment with Project Read. In front of you, you should be seeing, now that you're watching this, an email that Christine, our assessor, will normally send out. I'm Jane, and she's sending this out like I am a learner coming in to do an assessment. I work at Project Read as well. So you'll get the details of when the meeting is. She will send this reminder the day before, and she'll look at that it's for 10 a.m. for about an hour. So you know that at 10 a.m. you'll be needing to sign in. We always suggest you go in early to practice this. Now you can always go in and make sure that everything is set up before this so you know it works. That will be the link you'll be going to. Before we go to that link though, she also has given you attachments that you'll need to open during the assessment and you just want to find them before the meeting. If you scroll down, they're at the bottom, you'll see the four here. And in this case, let's just look at the first one, math. To get the math one to come down, what I usually do, if, in my case, I have Google Drive. That's what that means. If you have a drive and you understand how to save something there, you can do that. Or you can just download it. Now, the thing is, once you download it, it is a PDF document. And PDF is just a file format. What you need then to read it is Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is a free download. So you can open up any PDF documents that you get from different sites. And the majority of government forms are under PDF. So what I'm showing you here is up at the top of the screen, you can see this. If you just go to getadobe.com backslash reader backslash, you're going to see this. Download Adobe Acrobat Reader. You click on it and it downloads for free. It is something, once again, that is very useful for you to have if you don't already have that. You don't want the Pro, that costs money. It's just the free one is all you need. So let's go back to that email. And we're going to click on the Google Meeting. All right. The first time you go into a Google Meeting, you will probably be asked to set up your camera and your microphone. Just click on the process. All laptops, tablets, and telephones, cell phones, have the ability to set up so that you can use your video and use your microphone. They're built into those. Or if you're like me, I have a headset that I use. So I will hook into my headset, just like you would for watching a movie or watching YouTube videos. You can listen to your sound, but you can also speak. The, the microphone and your speakers usually are very connected within the same thing. So I'm clicking on the Google Meets. Because I've been there before, it's going to take me to this. What? Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough here. <coughs> so you can always join using a phone for audio. As you can see, my camera is working because now you see me. Hi. And my messy office at home. Uh, you can tell I'm doing work because there's stuff all over the place. I can always check my audio video. The one thing you know that your microphone is working is if you see these down in this corner, they will be moving up and down as I'm speaking. If I stop speaking, they become dots and stop working. This is also a way I can turn off my microphone as you see there. If I don't want to speak or if you have a whole bunch of screaming in the background or dogs barking like I sometimes have, you can turn that off. And if you prefer not to have your camera showing, that's quite all right. You can always turn off your camera as well. You may have to show Christine some things, but this is probably the easiest way to do it. So when this happens, when this screen comes up, all you're going to do is click join now. And in that case, what it will come up and tell you is that if when Christine is ready to let you in, she'll let you into the room. So you're just kind of waiting. It's like, this is like sitting in a waiting room at the doctor's office. And when they call you in, you get to go in and then go through the fun stuff, right? So we're joining and we come up to this screen, right? And just because my computer's going a little slow, it'll take a moment for me to, for it to catch up to me being on here. So there I am again. Hi. 
When you come in here, there will be two screens like this. You'll see yourself in a little bit smaller screen, probably about the size of what I'm showing here. Um, or it depends on how you have it set up. You can always set up this. Uh, this is where you can see yourself up here and you can see one person quite large, the other person speaking. It's options that you have. So in this case, the only people in this room are me. So there I am. That's what I clicked on just to see that, right? Those little people, you come back here, little people show. There should be two of you in that room. So you should be able to see both of you by clicking on that. This is your chat. If you are having problems with doing anything or your sound is cutting in and out, write into chat and tell Christine, hi, my sound isn't working. And if you click enter, or you can click on that arrow that was over there, it will put the message up so she can see it. And when that happens, you would normally see a little note up here, or this would turn color. So you can even say, what I'm saying, hers isn't working so well, she might put up a note up there. These have nothing to do with what we're working on, right? So you don't need to worry about those. The other thing is, you want to look at these three dots down here. This is where you can set up a lot of different things within it. You can change the layout. If I wanted to see more people, if I want to have a presentation, I can put things on a sidebar or I can spotlight. I have it set as tiled. You can have it set as auto. It's how you want to see people and you can make it maximum. You can have tons of people on that screen, but in this case, you're only having two, right? And if we go back down to those three dots in the bottom right hand corner, you can also change your background so you can blur your background. If you don't want your home showing, I can do this. I'm just going to stop because it does use a lot of broadband, which means it'll slow things down. But you can have a blurred background. And as you can see, I'm up high in my house. I'm a little bit far away from my internet. So it's going to take it a while to do it. And that's why that is something I don't suggest using unless if you have that, okay? Because it lets me know my computer might slow down while running video effects. As you can see, I look I'm like I'm talking in slow motion now. So I'm taking those off and everything comes back to normal. There's other effects there. Once again, it's about your internet and how well they are worked and used. Um, you can do full screen. You can turn on captions if you're not understanding what somebody is saying that will guess what the words are that are being said and will go along the bottom of the screen. So there's that. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward to use and should be fairly easy. You can also in here raise a hand to let somebody know that you wanted to speak or if you want, if you have a question, if Christine is asking you something and you have a question, you can put that. You also have to click on it though to lower it or your hand will be raised forever. These, once again, you can turn off your camera or if you're thinking and you just, you know, like to mumble while you're thinking, if you're like me, when I'm figuring out a math problem, I'm mumbling. You can click this to do it. Once your assessment is done, you click on here to leave the call. And there we're done. That is how you use Google Meetings for an assessment.